welcome back to the Cocktails Code and Conversation podcast. Um, woo, it's been a minute, not really, just last week, but it feels good to be back, get the interviews back. And of course, we have a- another special guest. Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Aubrey Turner to the pod. Thank you, Mr. David Lee. <laughs> all right, Aubrey, go ahead and introduce yourself, man. Let the people know who you are, what you're all about. Hey, good people. Um, my name is Aubrey Turner. I uh, work in cybersecurity, work in identity. I <clears throat> uh, work for Ping Identity. And uh, prior to that, uh, spent some time at Optiv. And Sometimes. what? Sometime. He was there for Sometime. Like <laughs> and, uh, I, did a, I did a stretch. <laughs> I won't quite call it a bid, but <laughs> I, I did. I did. Uh, uh, I, I actually can't even. 10 years ish between Optiv and Fishnet Security. So, yeah. so I'm doing the math right. And then um, prior to that, uh, what got me into cyber, what got me into tech is um, spent some time at Deloitte and Touche. Uh, and uh, that's really the foundation of my career in cyber and identity. Yep. Um, and after, um, after college, spent a couple of years in, in, in banking, which actually really exposed me to the whole sort of, um, you know, uh, controls and I, you yeah. know, IT security and those 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 kind of things. So that's the the long and short of it, David. I'm sure we can kind of get into it some 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 more, right? Yeah, man. No, there's a, there's a whole bunch of questions that um, that yeah. I didn't send you that I'm going to ask you that you're not prepared for. So because that's oh, how we roll. Um, it's so funny you said Deloitte and Touche. It's I'm so used to calling them Deloitte. <laughs> I always forget <laughs> that it's technically Deloitte and Touche. Um, yeah. It's mostly just Deloitte now. But so I'm trying to think. Honestly, Aubrey, how we met, and I don't remember. I just know it had to be through Block. It had to be. Uh, yeah. It's either it's either Block or the and or the SailPoint connection, right? Um, because yeah, the, right around the time I started uh, selling SailPoint, and that was really Block is the one who brought me back into identity at Fishnet, mm -hmm. and the one of the main solutions that we were selling at the time was SailPoint. So it's got to be a sort of a, you know, block sale point yeah. you know, uh, connection, which is how you and I know each other. And maybe even um, one of the, the navigate type type things. Probably. Right? That's right? what I'm thinking. I was thinking it's, it was either like a navigate or one of those like field channel events, right? Yeah. Um, that we were doing or something like that or whatever. I just, um, I just remember like, for for most people that I end up like getting really cool with is just like once I'm like okay this person's cool like I'm just, that that's just it right so I was like all right that that guy's cool so if if he's there like it's gonna be a good event it's gonna be a good time we're gonna yeah. go um and you know quite honestly I'm just gonna be real like you you were black so I was like all right I, it's, not, it's not like there's a whole bunch of them so I'm like hey, he's go I was like I'm he's gonna have to be cool like because uh it's only ever gonna be like me and him right. <laughs> like, <laughs> So we stand up. Right. Just a little bit. Just a little, a little bit. bit. We stand um, up. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about like so um coming into specifically identity, right? It's this, you know, super niche, you know, part of cybersecurity. And you know, I really feel like it's 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 grown up a lot, like in the last, you know, five or seven years and really gotten to the point where, you know, it truly it doesn't feel like a stretch anymore when you say like it it is a part of cybersecurity, right? It used to feel yeah. Like a stretch, right? We used to be like, yeah, yeah. this is cybersecurity. I did it. They'd be like, what? Now it's 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 truly getting to that point where it's it it does kind of feel like that. So just um, you know, give us a quick rundown of you know your career in in identity and, and some of the things that you've seen and that you enjoy about it. Yeah. So like I like I mentioned, my original sort of exposure to um, security was at the at the bank, right? I just worked at a bank. I'm a I'm a mass hole. Right. So I was, um, <laughs> um, I wasn't born in Massachusetts, but I was raised there, went, went to college there. I, like I said, worked, worked in banking for a couple of years, realized I didn't want to be a banker, but I did like the IT and, and security things that I got exposed to. And just through some connections, some people I knew had an opportunity to move to Atlanta and get a job at Deloitte, which was right. outstanding, you know, get out cold. You know, this is um, Atlanta. Atlanta has continued to change, and it was even a different place when I first moved. But right. you know, just just a great opportunity for me to kind of spread spread my wings. 
Um, and really just through, I think in my case, and I'll make a long story very, very short, but just in my case, showing interest and, and curiosity mm -hmm. in what we called, you know, it wasn't even cyber that ran cyber back then, right? It was right. just information security is what we called it, right? And I just, I just demonstrated a curiosity and an interest and sort of initiative to go consume some things, the books and things and, and I mean, podcast did, did not exist, <laughs> right? <laughs> so you had to go find these things right. uh, on your own, right? You know, you, you go to Barnes and Noble, and then, you know, maybe there were some things on online, but just enough of a curiosity where some managers and some senior managers and a, and a, and, and a partner said, hey, we think this guy, right? He, he wants to do this. He's, you know, he's curious. So I got sent to um, sent to training on Tivoli Identity and Tivoli Access Manager, right? And Ooh. yeah, buddy, yeah, <laughs> it's a different world. <laughs> it's a different world. Um, and I and I will say this about Deloitte, right? One of the things that they're really good at is is training people, and and so the other things they had a lot of internal training as well. Like, so what are the nice. fundamentals of cyber, right? What are the fundamentals of security? You mean uh, the, the the CIA triad, right? The that that whole thing, right? Yep. You know, got me my CIA SSP, right? Sent me to training for for that. So really, really good place to kind of get a found a foundation and get exposed to you know um, security and particularly identity. And at the time, you know, or after that that Tim Tam stuff, it was just really sort of building, trying to do do do, do some things around sing, single sign on, right? And you, and you know, David, right? Tim Tam is very, very complex, required a lot of heavy coding, yeah. all that stuff, right? So um, that's where I got exposed to identity. And funny enough, you know, worked in that space for a little bit. Um, then I got into privacy, which is how I ended up in a data privacy security background. So again, demonstrated some, you know, interest in that space. Um, I did some of the first cardholder information security program reviews. This is the precursor to um, what is now known as um, the PCI DSS. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I did some of those first few, few, few projects that got me into data security, which got me into privacy, which is how I got my CIPP. Right. Uh, and then before I left Deloitte, that's what I was doing. When I got to Fishnet, I started doing all kinds of things in cyber again, across the, the cyber dom domain, like, you know, everything from vulnerability testing to, um, you know, just all kinds of stuff, right? Because Fishnet right. at that time was so, so small that everybody did everything. Everything, yeah. Consultants, we all reported to one person. As it grew though, and as Fishnet eventually bought, um, bought, in, bought into the identity space, that's how I met Block. That's how I got back into identity, right? And so this is now probably going on seven, eight years, I, I think probably that I've been back focused on identity. So I've kind of come full circle, right? right. So it started when it was sort of just new and super complex, not to say that it isn't, but did some other things in, in cyber, right? And in, in, in the data security space, and then Block got me yeah, back yeah. to identity, which I owe him, right, some uh, a debt of gratitude for that because it's 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 been great, right? Um, you know, when I got back in, in into identity, single sign-on had evolved so much to the point where you know SAML was a thing now, right? Right. Um, so it had evolved tremendously. Um, people were certainly taking more interest in it. Um, still, probably not as much from a security perspective, right? But you know, still looked at as an operational mm -hmm. um, play, right? Hey, can we, how can we make this, these processes more, more efficient? But things change, right? Bad guys get smarter, identity, you know, definitely becomes more of a security play. And then there's other things like the IDSA and identity centric, you know, security. So it's just become um, uh, a lot more focus on it. And I like to say that folks like yourself, Block, myself, and other, a list too long, Bird, a list too long to even begin to mention the people that you and I know have really sort of pushed identity to now where it is more of yeah. a, a pillar within cyber, right? It's not just a standalone thing that you just do. Right. So that's, that's the long and short of it, really. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, and <clears throat> look, I, um, what I found that, you know, two patterns, number one, like nobody ever kind of really, you know, 
because it's so new, this industry, right? Um, in, in, in relationship to the overall, you know, security yeah. industry, um, nobody ever really kind of picks it and, and wants to study, you kind of fall into it. But also um, what I found is like uh, the people who are, who stay in it long enough also get very well-rounded, right? Like you can come into identity and it's like, if you really want to get good at it, you kind of have to understand the greater scheme of what it fits in. So that that experience for you to be able to, you know, go into data privacy, do other things, vulnerability testing, like you, you see where all of this fits into the bigger picture, um, which I think really helps to number one, you know, sell the story right to executives yeah. to understand why this is important. But also you get to, you know, for me, it helped when I was a consultant and trying to sit down with customers and say, all right, let me understand these business requirements that you're saying that you need, right? But also keeping in mind, like you've got a bigger picture that you've got to fit into. So while I can go and, and build this thing to do whatever it is that you want it to do, right? I need to keep the bigger picture in, in my head and go, okay, but at some point, right? You're going to need to go and liaison with your security folks. And that compliance is going to come through and you're going to need to be able to answer like, how this actually was done and what was assigned in access. And that's going to need to tie up to it if we need to come back and do a forensic investigation on something, right? And they go all the way back from the audit logs that the that the, the, the SIM tool is getting, all that all that needs to be able to line up. You know, those those type of things, right? Where, you know, I'll nerd out for just a second, even coming down to like the data attributes and what you build into your identity and what you're logging, right? You know, stuff like that, right? You really don't think about it until you take a step back and really understand in the bigger picture, right? Like how, yeah. how are all these things going to be used? So um, it's, it's, it's been really great to see it kind of grow to where it's at today. Um, and I mean, yeah, I'm just going to be real. Like I, I'm happy for it because it's, it's paid me a shit ton. And, and so, and hey. I, I can't explain. So a couple, a couple <laughs> of things strike me, right? One, I expressed uh, some interest um, when I was at the bank. So I got the job out of uh, in banking. I was a management trainee at this bank, right? And I just basically rotated through a bunch of the different departments, right? Everything from treasury to um, to the uh, back office processing um, to in the internal audit function. And one of my managers, I expressed a little bit more interest in, in the IT side of things. I was always just kind of curious how we, you know, how there are computers were networked and it was a Novell network at that point. Right. So that's just kind of was just drawn to that. And I expressed some, some curiosity about kind of following that path a little, a little, a little bit more. And a, and a manager just kind of just like, I don't know, he just, he just didn't have my back really. Right. But, and I, and I would love to sit here and tell you that sort of where I sit now and I, you know, in identity, my, my role at ping, the, the previous roles that I've had, that all that was orchestrated, you know, and I have a degree in economics, dude, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, uh, you know, a way to approach problems, right? So from, from that perspective, but it's not like I went to school for computer science or, or, or anything, you know, super technical. When I got out of school, figured out, hey, I want to go in this direction, had a, a manager sort of just like, hey, dude, what are you? No, 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 no. It's like almost like he wanted to push me like in a commercial banking type type. Right. Which is great. Those, those guys make a ton of money. But I was just more naturally interested in sort of the IT and the security side of things. And I just I'm just knock on wood blessed that I, you know, had that that again, that the the curiosity um and you know people just took took notice but I, I i can't sit here and tell you right now that i certainly planned out all, all all of this i am thrilled and blessed that you know at that moment i said at least i want to do something that i i have you know that i like i want to learn more about this and that is what put me on this road in security and in identity right, right? and i i can't knock that and it's just once you have that, right, it's then about the hustle, right? Then you got to hustle, right? Then if somebody gives you a shot because they think you're interested or they, 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 they see aptitude and, um, you know, the uh, work, work, you, like you want to work, right? You want to accomplish something, then you got to just step on the gas, right? Yeah. And that's, that's how I'm, how I'm here, right? It's, it's, uh, again, I, it's not like I wrote down you know, hey, I want to be a uh, identity, 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 Roddy, whatever. I'm <laughs> Roddy. 
I did. <laughs> like, you oh, know, it's, not like, it's not like I sat down and said like, hey, I wanted to be uh, an identity cybersecurity person, right? right. I, I, again, I'd be lying if I said that, right? Um, but as I saw the path kind of come sort of illuminate itself or what have you, then I've just focused and, and kind of moved in that, in that direction. And like I said, man, it's, it's like you said, it's been great. I, I yeah. can't even, can't even front on that. It's been I mean, great. look, there's, there's a, you know, there's a lot of powerful things that, that you said in there. Right. And I, I think, again, one of the, the patterns is I've been talking to people over the last year is um, you see two, one big thing, curiosity, right? Like this, you know, for all the shortcomings that this field has, right. And, and we're get, we'll get into those in a little bit, but um, at the end of the day, it really is a field that is about curiosity and your ability to, you know, kind of show that initiative and make things happen, right? That, that's what's, especially on the technical side, right? That's, that's what's rewarded. It's, it's like, hey, I was looking at this. I'm curious about this. I kind of want to poke around and see how this works. And I want to go find out more, right? Yeah. And the, 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 the beautiful thing about the tech field is it, it's, all, it's all based on a bunch of curious people who just want to understand how stuff works and that's it. And so what happens is when you show that initiative, you get around a bunch of those like, Oh yeah. Like, Hey, this person is curious about this. Oh, here, let me show you this. Let me give you this. And then all of a sudden, like you become more curious. You start eating. And then that, that whole thing fuels it. And people are like, Hey man, this, this person, this guy, this girl, like they got it. Like they're really, let, let's, let's bring them on because you realize when you're on a team and you're doing things, it's like, you need a whole bunch of curious people who just want to go figure stuff out. Yeah, I think the curiosity begets the the initiative, mm -hmm. which then begets, you know, people who want to help you or, or people who want to support you, which then begets success. And however you define that, right? Whether it's, you know, you want to buy your first home or you want to pay off your, you know, your, your student loan debt, if if you know, if that's a thing, whatever it is, right? But that curiosity begets that that initiative, which then leads to other things. And it's just, again, right. I, I'm, I'm not uh, saying that's like, it's it's a recipe, but it, it certainly helped me kind of, you know, get to where I am. And, and and David, I don't know if you know this, but I wasn't even born in this country. So yeah, it's I a whole, know that. that's a whole nother, we could do a whole podcast on that beat. The, <laughs> The whole that, that whole story, right? The the what do I want to say? The uh, the the challenges of coming to another country, right? Your your parents not being born here, you not being born here, right. and having to figure it out. And so you know that that whole part of my history, it, it's a great part of my background. I, I appreciate it, but it's also con contributes to kind of you know my whole story and, and how I am, where I am, and all that kind of. Stuff, so. Right. <clears throat> so yeah, we're we're gonna um perfect segue. Good job, Aubrey. Look yeah, at that. Thank you. Didn't thank even you. Have, they didn't even have to like set you up for you. you. Just you just you just straight went there. So okay. um, but I but I do want to um talk a little bit about that, right? And, and to your point, like we'll we can um there's a bunch of other stuff I want to get to, and we can have a whole yeah. pot on that, and we'll we'll let this flow how it flows. But like you know, with that, so with your background, right? Um, and I mean, it's the Bahamas, right? Jamaica, man. Jamaica. Sorry, my fault. No, no, already. <laughs> <laughs> nothing Stop. against the nothing against right. the massive. Exactly. Uh, Caribbean, West Indians. No, no. Yeah. to say now all my Bahamian listeners are gonna be like, "Hey, <laughs> hell, <laughs> man." <laughs> yes, no, but a little the little country of Jamaica. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, with that, like, it's 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 different. It's different because, you know, not being born here, coming here and then, you know, kind of growing up and, and, and seeing the plight. Right. It's always interesting talking to people who aren't born here, but who have like the same complexion as me. Right. So you're yeah. you're Jamaican, but you're going to be looked at as African-American. Right. Everybody looks at you be like, oh, well, he, 100%. He's, so it's like you get <laughs> you get the full treatment <laughs> of being black in America. But it's like, but I'm not American, though. Like, I mean, I am, but I'm like, I wasn't I wasn't born here. So there's there's a. Uh, what I found in, um, in in talking to other people like that is that it's a little different the way they perceive it. So I'm interested, right, to hear your take on that, right? So, you know, how that was, you know, kind of coming up and, and growing up here, and then what you saw from that as you started, you know, your career path, right? Um, yeah, I, I think the, the the biggest thing for me, particularly as I've, you know, I really appreciate 
the the what my parents gave up right mm -hmm. um to move my brother and i here and and there's a whole his history around sort of the things going on in you know in jamaica at that time like any country right its own struggles um but the the one thing that i i say that that and i can't I, I, this is not a blanket statement but but i'd say the one the one thing i i take away from that the, the sort of people migrating to the united states is it's and and then again i'll I, maybe i'll make it about um the the caribbean people right it's like you don't move here to 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 mess up right i was gonna drop the f-bomb but <laughs> <laughs> pull up a right. little bit i'll pull Take up a little bit you know it. well, listen, it's, it's like my my parents didn't move my brother and i to massachusetts for us to um not um make something of ourselves right right, right? and i and i don't you know your 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 point about our we have the same complexion so we're seen as black americans but it i want to say there there is some difference right it it it's sure. and maybe it is because you move here and and you see this in other other populations as 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 well right it's like hey you we have struggled we've given up things you know depending on you know how your journey was here i have a you know fortunately enough my my family we we flew on, we we on a plane right eastern airlines not around right i have a vietnamese friend of mine who i worked with he came here in the bottom of a boat right and and okay. so however you get here right and and part of that that struggle as is as somebody who's immigrated to the united states it's it's sometimes incumbent on you as that child to make something of of yourself now it can be a tremendous amount of pressure or it can be a blessing right and and so for us, part of it is like, yo, that sun is going down. You better get your ass inside. Right. Don't play. Don't play around. Don't don't mess around. You get inside. You do your homework, and sort of that whole discipline of of just like you know, again, making sure that you are you know staying on the right path. However, you want to you know d define that, but just. It, 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 again, I and I truly owe my parents and, and and my brother too, right? We both owe our parents so much just from again them giving up things, moving here, not being familiar with the United States. I mean, winter. I mean, they don't have winter in Jamaica, man. You know that. <laughs> like snow. <laughs> then, Seriously, like, Massachusetts, like Massachusetts. I think you know my you know I had family there, right? So that's that's yeah. that's why we move there. But and it, and and so I think part of part of what again we have the same skin tone but i think part of what sort of helped me somewhat is again that we did not move thousands of miles for you to uh not take advantage right. of the situation and i don't and i'm not saying i, I can't i, I don't want to disparage any other you know race, creed, or color, or even other Black Americans, even other Caribbean Americans. I, I can just speak from my experience of what right. it meant for my family to move here. Like, my brother's an engineer, right? Um, you know, the rocket scientist type type, type shit. Yeah. So it, it's, um, it, it just wasn't, uh, it, it's, I'm not going to say there was a, uh, it was a, like an ultimatum, but it's just like, Hey, you, you got to get your shit together. Yeah. Right. And I know plenty of other, you know, um, folks in the, in the Jamaican community that their families are like that. That's, that's how it is. That's the expectation. That's the bar. That's the standard. You got to live up, up to it. Not everybody yeah. makes it out, but you know, it, it, it's there if you want it. So that's, yeah. that's kind of how I look at it. And I, I, um, I, I struggle, keeping it real, I struggle with some of the kids that I grew up with who were born here. And again, maybe Black Americans in, in, in the sense of being Black Americans, right? right. I struggle because some of them are lost. Some of them, you know, my, uh, when I, you know, my mom would tell me before my parents um, re retired, my mom would always give me updates on some of my classmates. Oh, like, you know, so-and-so is in jail or someone shows, you know, so-and-so is, is dead. And nine out of 10 times, unfortunately, it was one of my black classmates. And it, it's 
it's like a, there's a little bit of survivor's remorse and, and, and mm -hmm. guilt that sometimes you don't know how to place that. And I, I don't, I don't know if like, again, sort of the structure that my family had that they had this, I can't necessarily say they had the same structure. I didn't eat dinner in their homes off, often enough to, 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 to know that. Cause I was like, right. parents were like, get your ass inside. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but there's a little bit of a, a little bit of like, you know, did I, I don't know. I just like, I, there, there is a little bit of guilt there, but at the yeah. same, at the same time, you got to take, um, there's some responsibility, right? My parents Absolutely. taught my brother and I res responsibility. You got to bear, there's accountability and responsibility and you got to bear both on your own and you can't necessarily save or help everybody because some people don't want to be saved or helped. Yep. Um, but it's again, to the, to, to, to your point, your, your question, yes, we have the same complexion. I just come from a little bit of different background. I feel like it's been a disadvantage and an advantage in terms of me getting, you know, me being able to get where I am. Right. I don't know how to put it, man. I don't, I don't want to say, say something stupid. <laughs> no, man, it's all good. Like, <laughs> um, and then look, there's, there's another, um, I'm actually planning, um, content for, for 2021. Right. And, yeah. and, um, there's a lot of things where that, that I want to dig into. And, and, and part of that is, is what you touched on a little bit of that, right? Like there is, you know, why it's so important for me, um, like on, on this podcast, people that listen to it now, watch it, like when the videos come out, right. You're going to notice there's just more people of color. Right. And, and it's yeah. not, and it's like, I'm doing that for a reason. Number one, representation absolutely fucking matters. Right. Like people yeah. need to be able to see people that look like them in different fields. And, and so I'm, I'm, you know, obviously I'm in the tech industry, so I'm trying to highlight as many people as I can just to show people like, yes, there's paths, there's, there's things of that nature. Because, you know, for me, you know, growing up in LA uh, at the time that I did, like, you just, you just don't see it. Right. And so it's, it's hard to, it's hard to imagine yourself as something that you don't see. Right. Yes. Like that, that right. you don't like, okay, like, all right, like maybe I could do this, but I, I, there's a path, right. There, there was no, there was no computer scientists rolling around the hood when I was, when I was coming up. Right. Like, <laughs> There just weren't any, right? Like, so um, there weren't engineers, there weren't, you know, uh, there weren't doctors, there was, there were street pharmacists, but I don't really think they count. So um, <laughs> hey, those are, you know, you know, why it's so important for me to, to do that, but also just to just to highlight, right, the, the different paths, stuff like that. But um, like, I, I'm planning a whole just kind of talking series on that, you know, for 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 2021. So, you know, everybody watch out for yeah, that. I, 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 I'd like to say, well, I, I know in my case, right. Cause again, there wasn't a complete lack of those images of successful people of color. Right. Right. Um, my, my parents did all they could to make sure that we were exposed and, you know, within my family, right. My, my uncle here in Atlanta, he's, he's a, he's a doctor PhD. Um, and there's several other folks in my family who've, you know, gone all the way in education right so i had some folks like that in my family and then the exposure that my my parents made sure that my brother and, and i had to to know that even though that there were limited um people that look like us that uh, you know that were you know accomplishing things whoever they were my parents made as much of an effort to make sure that we knew that there were people right. who had gone above and beyond right had had, had had accomplished things that, that maybe people weren't aware of. And so that, again, I, I you know, I got to take that back to just fortunately having a really tight family structure, parents who cared and gave a shit and, you know, who, uh, you know, education mattered yeah. and, um, you know, learning and just being exposed to, you know, different people. And, and, and again, it, I'll, I'll say this, it wasn't just people of color. It was just people as well. Right. So, right. It wasn't always it wasn't always a person of color. It was people who were being successful as 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 well that you know my parents made sure that you know we we knew about and and here's the thing right it's not it's not my parents were really familiar or super super familiar with the the you know they they weren't born here right so they don't like hey going to college and and going to job and and knowing sort of the pathway so we were all sort of learning um, learning at the same time. But just again, having the will and just desire to kind of figure things out. Yeah. And, you know, I, I can't say I figured it all out, but, you know, yeah, I mean, 
you yeah. never do, right? Like they, you, you never do, like, right? Just keep learning, right? Just, right, exactly. Um, I think that's the, I think the sooner you learn that in life, right? That yeah. life is life is not a test where you know all the answers and you can fill in all the questions, right? It, it's yeah. just a constant journey of learning, right? And, you know, as, you know, I start to look at my life and like, it used to be five years. Now I look at it like in, in, in 10 year segments, right? Um, yeah. Like you just, you, you realize how much you, how much you learn, how much you grow and you see your viewpoints change, right? And you yeah. see that your priorities change and things like that. And it's, and it's all because you're constantly growing and learning. Like if that's not happening, right, then, you know, I'll speak for, for my life. Like if, if I, if I'm thinking the same way now that I did when I was 29, like there's a problem, right? Like yeah. I have I haven't done yeah. enough. I haven't been in, I, like there's something, something happened. I, I got stagnant. I wasn't around a different, you know, amount of people to kind of, you know, stretch that. And um, that that's, that's important, you know, as, as you kind of, you know, get older and, and, and get access to different things in life. So, yeah. Um, Usain Bolt, you know, world, world championship, fastest man alive kind of thing. He had this post, uh, like, I want to say sometime this year or last year. And I don't know if he, if it's an original post by him, but basically his point was that like people say, oh, you've changed, right? You know, that will come back to the hood thing. Oh, mm -hmm. you don't change, you know, all that kind of stuff. But the, you ha you should change. If, if, right. if, if you don't change, that means you're staying stagnant. You're not right. growing, you're not evolving, you're not learning. So you need to change. Doesn't mean you can't take others with you who want to be helped, but you have to change. Right. You can't stay the same. If you can't stay stagnant, right. If, if you stay stagnant that you're and, and to your point, right? Look, looking at your life in five or 10 year blocks and the things that you want to accomplish over that time, you're, you're going to change. It's just a yeah. question of, of, you know, is it positive change or negative change? And, and it, it, I, I just, it just stuck in my head when he, when he kind of wrote that and I was like, that makes a ton of sense. It's the simplest. Yeah. Thing. Yes. You need to change. You have to. Yeah. And no, people, you People who look at you crosswise or, or as as we Jamaicans say, you know, bad mind you, not quite that way, but you know, <laughs> yeah. play it bad, you know, just, just kind of think negative thoughts about you because you're changing, then they're they're not interested in, in yeah. your success or their success. So, it, you know, you gotta it was probably the the first the one of the first hardest lessons I had to learn uh, mm -hmm. from my mentors when I was one of my, my, one of my first mentor, I was, I was, how old was I? 23, 24, something like that. And, you know, he, he told me, he was like, look, the, the, the friends you have now, you're not going to have in, in three years. And I was yeah. like, what? He's like, and I was like, no, nah, man, you understand? Like we went to college together. We, we've, we've done all this stuff together. Like he was like, okay, I'm just telling you. <laughs> and he, he was like, look, the, the, the path that you're on and, and the things that you're telling me that you want to do and you want to accomplish, yeah. he goes, there's certain people that that aren't going to be there when 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 that's done. He goes so he goes and they're gonna they're gonna he, they're gonna reveal themselves to you like over the next like year or two. You'll see. Yeah. It. And uh, I I didn't want to hear it, man. I was like, you know, I was very. I mean, I'm still stubborn, but I was really stubborn then. What? But, uh, yeah. It's just some people find it surprising. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm such an easygoing guy. Like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, like it, 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 it. But dude. That stubbornness is is what allows you to to that 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 person stubbornness perseverance. Yep. Depending on the situation, right? You're either stubborn or you're persevering, right? right. Yeah, it just it, it it depends on how the other person is perceiving it. Like, it's, but right. it's, like, it's like, all right, like that that's I mean, look, that's how you um I'm not I've always a type like I don't I don't look at my accomplishments. I don't like really list them off or, yeah. or like put them on, on any kind of big thing. Cause I'm just like, look, I'm not, I'm not all that different from anybody else. It's just, I, you know, the, the quote that I love is like, it's, it's not how it's not, if you're going to win, it's if you're just going to hang around long enough to, to be there. Right. And so it, it's yeah. that thing to me. It's like, look, I, I'm going to figure this out. Right. Yeah. I just have to spend enough cycles, right. And put enough things together, ask enough questions and I'll figure something out. Right. And, and then that's how it is. And, and what I've noticed, like, especially, you know, when I was like, <clears throat> taking back to like delivering service and stuff like that, like, you know, all my projects always made it to production and all this stuff or whatever, just because it's like, look, you just, you stick around and you ask when it, when it gets hard, like you, you yeah. ask the right questions, you stick, you do these things like, and that might mean like, Hey, guess what? I'm working 16 hours today. Right. Like that, that's the stuff yeah. that people don't like to, to really hear. They want to see all that stuff or whatever. It's like, yeah, but like that meant that it's Friday and yes, I want to go be turned up, but at the work like, ethic. 
the but pride. If I don't figure this out, like we're, you know yeah. what I mean? It's not going to matter. So yeah. this Friday night, I'm, I'm staying here. I'm figuring this out. We're going through this. We're going through that. We're going through whatever. And it's, it's like, it's those things, right? It's those things on a project. It's those nights that allow you to get over the hump. And then you can apply this to anything else, right? It's those things. Like when you put in that extra effort that gets you whatever you want, right? Like all the accolades and all that stuff or whatever, yeah. It, it's it's it always comes down to like I'm gonna do my uh, Colossus Deadpool like impersonation one or two moments right it's it's <laughs> it goes right it's it, it's one or two moments when you decide like I'm this this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put in this effort all right yeah. so I'm gonna start preaching we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take a shift okay um well, this is awesome man dude Aubrey I'm gonna have to come you're gonna have to come back man there there's okay. so much stuff I want to talk about that I'm okay. gonna have to panel about but uh, so let's um. Let's shift to kind of talking about the tech, right? So it's been, um, you know, we've seen this maturity. It's it's, it's been really cool, right? Um, this past year, uh, you know, more so than ever, we've seen a really big investors on diversity and inclusion, right? Not just me yelling at people from my podcast, but yeah. like, unfortunately, the unfortunate events of like George Floyd and, you know, that kind of led um, led this country to a point that it it hadn't been in a while, right? I as As I was watching coverage, you know, it reminded me of, you know, as a kid studying coverage of the civil rights movement, when it was just like yeah, protests yeah. Yeah. Like everywhere where you could feel like there was a real tension. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, it made me think, I was like, I wonder, right. I wonder if this was what it was like then, right. Like now, granted the stakes were a lot higher than right. Yeah. Um, but you just felt that tension everywhere. So we saw a lot from, you know, companies and, and leaders kind of making these statements on diversity and inclusion. Um, you know, we, you know, we, we saw some fumbles, we saw some things or whatever, but um, I want to get your take right on some of the, like, just from not just this year, a little bit about this year, like what yeah. you saw this year, like what, what your response is to some of that, but like, you know, from a field perspective, from our, from our industry perspective, what's your, you know, take on where we are at with diversity and inclusion and, and, and what we can do going forward? Yeah. I mean, I, I think there's still a lot more that needs to be done and it is a, Again, I mentioned the sort of the accountability and res- responsibility, and that lies on both sides, right? Lies on the, the lies on us, right? Yeah. And it also a, a ton on on the 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 companies and 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 firms and institutions that we we choose to work for. So I think there's a there's a a lot that needs to happen, a lot more that that can can be done. Um, you know, some of the you know, a lot of the, the incidents that happened, you know, certainly the ones that, um, you know, like George Floyd, uh, you know, the Ahmad Arbery, yeah, some of those just really just, they're just, I mean, you just watch them and you just can't believe you're watching it like with, yeah. with your own eyes, right? So just devastating um, from a, just a, a human, a human to human perspective. Like how do you, how does one human treat another human like, like this, right? right. Um, so, and it just, it, it, it's, um, called up a lot of, um, I, I wonder if, if, if the pandemic hadn't happened and mm. some of these incidents had happened, would the, the same sort of cauldron and Uh-oh. would it have overflowed in the same way or would those things, have been kind of, <laughs> is this another podcast? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> would these same no, things no, have just... sort of flowed over and, and been highlighted and caught the same level of attention. I don't know if they would have. I honestly don't know if they would have. Like, I think it's like the, 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 the perfect storm of things that have been happening and haven't been getting national attention. And again, you know, a once in a century type of pandemic, right? right? So it's kind of the, the tipping point, the, the, those kind of events. Um, I, you know, one of, one of the things that really kind of struck me and I'll, I'll keep the vendors out of it, but I was at a, was representing Optiv at uh, one of, with one of our partners and these, these two young, um, black guys came up to me and, and it's happened before. And you know, the, the partner, whoever always thanks you, right? Maybe there's a thank you gift or you're sitting on a, on a panel or something is always, and again, um, some of these people, their their friends, their colleagues, you know, um, some of them are wonderful people, and so the the thanks is truly appreciated. And I love doing doing those kind of a thing, you know, those kind of events. 
But the best part of it, the proudest thing at this particular, on this particular occasion, when these two black guys came up to me and said, yo, you know what it meant for us to see you on that stage with those people? Right. That just, and again, I, I, in the moment, sometimes when you get invited to something like that, you may not be thinking about the impact that you're making just being on the stage and the, the power of your words and the power of just your, your presence, right? And that, in that particular moment, and this is before all this stuff happened um, in 2020, just reminded me of my role, right? Or just my part in just, I don't want to say be a role model, but just letting other people know that they can be at they can get a seat at the table yeah right and i'm not trying to big myself up or blow myself up but these guys literally man i was just like whoa that is probably one of the most powerful things that has happened to me in some time just the fact that these guys came took the time to say hey listen man we were so excited so glad to see you up there makes us feel like we're not just either tokens or we're not just yeah. we can get there right there are people who um, they're, they're obstacles, they're road, roadblocks. I don't want to diminish those at all. They do exist. There are glass ceilings, all that stuff exists, right? Um, but again, people can accomplish things. And so that was one of the sort of proudest mo you know, moments that stands out in sort of recent memory for me. That being said, there's still a tremendous amount of, of, of work. Um, I think we need to be curious. We need to take initiative. Yeah. Um, we need to demonstrate that we will be ready. That's, that's sort of our part, right? And then certainly on the part of our, the folks that, uh, again, whether we're starting our own company or we're going to work for somebody, they need to also be prepared and have the right programs so that those glass ceilings can be, they, they can be shattered, right? Yeah. Um, some of the some of the best teams that, that I've worked worked on have been a, a great mix of people, men, women, you know, Asian, black, what have you, right? We've sort right. of come together, solved, you know, big, big, big problems. Specific to sort of our people though, and people of our color, right? Again, our responsibility, right? We own that, right? Yeah. But also the 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 companies and firms that that we work at, you know, they're certainly they they bear responsibility as well to make sure that again the glass ceilings and those kind of things are eradicated the and 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 again without getting into it it's got to be common sense though right there's got to yeah. be a common sense approach to it um and i don't know <laughs> i don't know what exactly that means like i can't give you bullet points david but the approach needs to be common sense in terms of those things like i'm not necessarily I'm not asking for more than you know you would necessarily give to somebody else, but I want it to be just and fair, right? right? And I guess fairness is probably what it comes down to. I want you know it needs to be fair in terms of us having the same opportunity. And right, you, Bert, and I have talked about this, right? The the, the person who uh, person uh, you know non person of color may basically may get a shot to lead a team, and let's just say they they throw up on it, it goes to shit they could be given another chance to do that again. Whereas you and I, that door may slam in our face sort of right. permanent. And that's not fair. No. Um, so those are the kind of common sense things that I guess I'm talking about. Um, but, you know, I, in terms of my part in this, I just want to make sure that I can be, I guess, you know, somebody that somebody looks to and says, oh, this person is sitting in that seat or has this role or is working with these people oh, so he's gotten there. I think I can get there myself. Absolutely. Yeah, we got to, um, <clears throat> you know, we got to show that it's possible. We got to show that it's a path. And, you know, yeah. we got to, you know, we got to turn around, right? And we got to, we got to reach the handout and, and um, you know, make sure that they, that not only people can, can see, you know, people that look like them in those positions, but know that like, um, you know, better jobs of, of getting that access and approachable and, and all those things, right? It's, it's a big, um, it's a big list of things that, that we need to do to get there. But I, I think it's, you know, hopefully what we'll see is, 
that the attention that it got at, at the levels that it got this year, you know, at the board levels, at executive levels, people were talking about it. And, and to, to kind of to your point you were making with the pandemic, you had no choice. We, we had nowhere to go, right? It, it's right there in front of you. You couldn't run from it anymore, right? And so, yeah. you know, the thing is, you know, can we can we continue to, to, to keep this momentum and keep, keep it pushing going forward? So, um, you know- I just, I just wanna say one, one thing um, add to that. One of, one of the books I read when I was younger um, was a book by Reginald Lewis. Have you heard of him? Mm -hmm. um, the, the title of the book was Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun? <laughs> I got to say, it was a book that I read when I was, uh, I want to say I was either in college or maybe shortly after college at some okay. point. Um, and he was, um, I think he was, uh, he, he came from very humble beginnings, um, remarkable, remarkable man. Um, you know, kind of was one of um, the first black billionaires. And he, you know, he was a lawyer. I think he went to the Harvard Law School, um, used the leverage buyout to build a billion dollar business. Unfortunately, his life was cut short. I believe he, he passed away um, too soon from, from cancer, hmm. if I recall correctly. But that book, Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun, just kind of myself, right, just kind of said, hey, like th this why should they have all the fun, right? right? And was a, I don't want to call it a, a, a map, a roadmap, but certainly a perspective on somebody who had accomplished a lot of things, who came from very, very humble beginnings and against all odds, you know, built a billion dollar business, right? And, and stood out and, and was, was at the level with, you know, as a minority was at the, at the table, at that commission table, with those four other families, right. that kind of that kind of thing, right? Yeah, the, you know, like having those kind of conversations. So, again, you got to find, you know, whatever whatever it is that uh, inspires you, whatever gets you up, whatever motivates you. Um, you can, if you look for it, you will find it. And I, I just want to, I'll just call that out as one of the books that I read earlier on in my career that was like, oh yeah, this makes a ton of sense. Like, why should I, why should I accept anything less? Kind of thing, right? There you go. All right, with that, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Aubrey and I are going to get into uh, the final question, but also we're going to talk about racing. Yeah. Right after this. Okay. I have some t-shirts with you. Uh, MyLifeMattersToYou.com. MyLifeMattersToYou.com. Uh, you saw the shirt. I was wearing it uh, on today's episode of the C3 Squad and the podcast. Uh, this is put together by a friend of mine, and I just I love the idea for the shirt. When he first said that he was putting this together, I couldn't wait. And I told him I'd be the first one to hop in line and get a shirt, and I definitely did. So it's got women's sizes, um, the nice Bible phrase there, uh, men's sizes, adult hoodies. We got jackets, accessories, everything. Uh, even face masks, which is pretty cool. So um, with all that's going on right now in the world, right, especially what's going on within the, uh, the black community, things we saw this year, um, I just thought this was a positive uh, line of clothing just to put out there that, yes, our life matters. This is why. So check it out, mylifematterstoyou.com. Appreciate it. Tell them the C3 Squad sent you. All right, so welcome back. Um, we're going to get into, um, coming up in the final segment, we're going to get to the last sip. And, uh, you know, I'll ask uh, Aubrey the question that I ask everybody. But before we get to that, me and Aubrey got a debate coming in because this, this, we, in, in the, in the sound check, uh, we were having a discussion and I said, we got to hold this because we got to get 10 years once we get into the podcast. So um, I, I am the recent uh, new owner of, of a Tesla performance system, Model Y, um, and I freaking love it. It's great. I'm loving everything about it. And so Aubrey as Aubrey tends to do, issued out a challenge and said, you know, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to get out there and race. And I was like, I mean, yeah, but you're gonna lose. Like, why would you even set yourself up for that? But then I, I thought about it, he got me because I was like, I didn't really ask him what he was gonna be driving. So. <laughs> uh, all right. What you got into the hood over there, man? Listen, I'm, uh, I, you know, it's like, don't, don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So we we got we we got your electrons against my my dinosaur go go juice. <laughs> um <laughs> so right now I'm driving a the 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 supercar of station wagons, which is uh E sixty three S AMG. So it's a Mercedes AMG E sixty three S wagon. So it's it 
it, it hauls ass. It, it, picks up stuff from, it hauls stuff from Costco and it hauls ass. <laughs> I literally had a guy stop me in the Costco parking lot the other day. He, he was driving an AMG um, as well. And he goes, oh, I see you got the daddy wagon. And I go, yeah, I'm going to get the daddy. <laughs> Well, yeah, dude, the, the, this car hauls ass, and it's it's completely it's a sleeper. It's it looks like yeah. it, it looks like it's a station wagon. It looks like a station wagon, but right. mine's all like vadered out and shit. It's all like tinted out black. It's, yeah, man, it's it's okay. um, right. yeah. So I I got some for that Model Y. Now, okay. if you show up in a Model S plaid, yeah, yeah that's a different <laughs> <laughs> come at me, bro, when you got a Model S plaid. <laughs> this guy. All right. Well, you know, look. There's 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 a there's a Porsche track out there in Atlanta. Oh, um, I so, was just there, dude. If I, if I, I saw a buddy of mine is um, he uh, he uh, he's thinking about getting a nine eleven. So we went to the dealer and um, to kind of kind of woo him, they invited him and a guest to mm. uh, come down to uh, Porsche Porsche Experience Center. And yes, people, I live in Atlanta, so that that's uh, if, if if that wasn't obvious. But so it went went down there, man. And, and I gotta say, if I could do that like a couple times a month, that is one of the best therapies. Like hammering a car, you know, at speed. And 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 you know, ladies and gentlemen, I I am a you know petrol head. Like I love cars. If I wasn't if I wasn't in identity, if I wasn't in cyber, I would be doing something in the automobile industry, right? Just love cars. I love things that go go fast. Um, Formula One season just wrapped wrapped up. Can't wait till it starts up. Um, speaking of speaking of uh, black folk that have accomplished a lot, Lewis Hamilton. If you yep. don't know, go read up on on the brother. Um, another guy who I believe he's got some Caribbean roots as well. I think his father was from uh, is he Bayesian or Trinidadian. I forget which 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 one. Mixed mixed you know right. child, but. Listen, he's he's up there with, you know, the other the mostly white, you know, men that have won, yeah. you know, Formula One, right? So, incredible story. And uh, if you don't know about him, go go check it out. Um, but yeah, I, I I like things that go really 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 fast. And um, you know, once a once or twice a year, I get out and, you know, we'll um, either do one of these track days. David, if, if you're ever in Atlanta, we should go do the um, Atlanta Motorsports Park. They have these uh, really, really fast go-karts. And it sounds kind of good thinking go-karts. These things haul ass and they pull like a couple G's. Um, what? The track, yes. <laughs> it, it's, Go-kart? Um, yeah. Do you, do you know, um, yeah, you, you, Mike Moreno? Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know Mike, right? Yeah. He's the one who... Uh, He's another speedhead, you know, kind of guy. Uh, and I think uh, earlier this year, or last year, he's the one who, who told me about it. So we went up there. He's fast, man. Do not mess with that guy <laughs> on two wheels, on four wheels. He's fast. <laughs> he's fast. He, and I probably got like 40 pounds on him. So that's another, you know, weight's a factor. Right. That dude is quick. Um, so he and I went up there and dude, like, the next day I could feel um, sort of on my thighs because of the, when you turn the G's, like it, you get pressed against the, 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 the sort of the metal frame because you're pulling so many G's, but it, right. it, it's such a thrill. It's so awesome. But yeah, I, I love things that go fast. So, so yeah, um, you, uh, you bring your model Y and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll wave like this. <laughs> Dude, I got smoked by a station wagon. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> to bring something else out the garage, but whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for sure. No yeah, doubt. Hurts, um, I nowhere near a gearhead at all. Yeah. Um it's all it's it's always been more of a uh like a curiosity for me. Yeah. As far as I think the biggest thing, and it kind of came out of necessity when I was in college. I I was broke, right? So um, I had a Nissan Altima, and um, you know, I just I couldn't afford for to go take it to somebody to go fix it. So I remember I was always in uh, I don't know if it was AutoZone or whatever, whatever one of those places yeah. they'll go test your battery. But they used to have these, um, and I, I haven't been in one in so long, like um, because I don't work on my car anymore. But I think no, it was A's manual, like, yeah. but, and it just it broke down. Like you would find like your year, 
and it basically broke down the car, like an, an entire book, like pictures yeah. and just I know you're every about. single little like piece of whatever. So I bought yeah. that book one day, and you know, again, I'm a I'm an engineer at the end of the day, right? So I'm a computer system. So I'm like at the end of the day, I, I want to understand how things work. So I'm like, all right, if I can take it, if I can do an algorithm and take apart a, you know, uh, an algorithm that puts a program, I was like, I can figure yeah. this. I'm looking at, it, I was like, all right, this is not that bad. So. I ended up working, doing a lot of work on my also myself. Like I replaced my alternator and my battery, stuff like that. Things that I could easily get to. Granted, I'm in college. I don't have like a yeah. garage somewhere. So I was like, whatever I could get to with some easy tools, I did that. Um, and I don't know, that that's kind of, that, that kicked that curiosity for me. So I wasn't um, much like anything. Once I take something apart, like now I don't like, I, I want to say fear, but that's not really the right word. Like now I'm not worried about like breaking something. I was like, oh, like I know how this, like, okay, this is what this does. Cool. I take it yeah. apart, back together, stuff like that. So um, I kind of got into it. I picked up, um, so after college, I picked up a, so the C230 Mercedes um, yeah. that they have for a little small little hatchback. I picked that up um, and I worked, I had this uh, mechanic that was out of Manassas and he was um, from Germany, like worked on him and like he, he did like a little tuning on that one or whatever. And that's when I like, I, I kind of got into a little bit. Like I would buy, like I had like my, um, <laughs> I cover like my racing tires. I have, I have my regular tires and the ones where I was like, all right, yeah, I'm kind of go you down. Fast and furious. <laughs> <laughs> not, not quite, not quite. Right. Like, um, but, uh, but then after that, it just, you know, just life. Well, stuff. life happens, Dude, man. Yeah. I, like, I had a, you know, a couple sporty little cars. I had a Acura Integra for a little bit. Um, had like, a couple that, that fit you so much too. Like, what? I, you had an Acura Integra. I'm just, just like, I can totally see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had an Acura Integra. I had, actually, I had two of them. I had two of them. I love them so much, man. Great, great freaking cars. I um, The one I had when I was in college, my mom always knew when I was coming home because I was just ringing those wheels. <laughs> like, heel toe down shifting, like, handbrake. Tur- like, my mom, oh, he's coming up. He's home. My my oldest son, the the, the Fast and Furious. I don't even think Fast and Furious is out, out yet. Actually, close, but not 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 quite. But yeah, I just you know I just had an affinity for um for uh, for, for for cars and things that go go fast. I mean, heck, I'll I'll watch speedboat racing. I just I just love things that go, <laughs> go fast, man. Planes, trains, automobiles, anything oh, that goes zoom, zoom zoom, man. I I you know. Um, you know, speaking on that, like, why should white guys have all the fun? Before I read that book, this, you know, I grew up in Massachusetts, right? So I, I took up skiing, right? Um, just to see what the deal with it was. Like, why do people like doing this, right? Yeah. Just, you know, just exposing yourself to, to different things. And then so, you know. Yeah, exposing yourself to cold. <laughs> It is cold, but I, I recently rediscovered it and I, and I just, I love it, man. I, I, you know, if you, if you want to go skiing sometime, let me know. I'll pass, man. I did, I did it as a kid. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. All right. It's good as an adult too, man. I'm, I'm serious. I don't good. like cold. I don't like cold. So <laughs> it's not like, it doesn't, and I don't care, you know, well, you got to get the right line, isn't it? I, mm. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It, it is a pain in the, you know I'll, that. I put it like this. We're just, we're, Sonny, we're just talking about this at work and we're like, oh, maybe next year for the holiday, you know, holiday party for if, if the world's a little yeah. bit back to new normal, we'll do something. And, and, you know, CEO was talking about like, hey, we'll go skin. Like, get a I was like, look, I'll be down at the lodge with the hot chocolate waiting for y'all. To hot toddy. Yeah. Like I, I'm good. Y'all go have all the fun y'all want. I'm gonna be chilling down here next to the heater. <laughs> next, next to a roaring, a roaring fireplace. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Roasting marshmallows and making smoke. You're, you're, you're doing the you're doing apres ski <laughs> without the ski. <laughs> right, exactly. I ain't doing yeah. all that. Dude. I, I got you. All right. all right. So um we're gonna wrap up um as we like to call it. Effectually called the last sip. I already took mine. Um and I'm not gonna pour any more. Uh, uh, if I pour any more, I'm not gonna get anything done today. So uh we're gonna head to the segment that we effectually call the last sip. That's not the right. Dude, I just, you know, it's been too long, man. I don't even remember what you know what I signed the buttons to anymore. So you get stuff like that. It's all good. That's how people know it's real. Uh, right. So the last tip, Aubrey. Um, this is the question I ask everybody at this time, and it's it's a very simple question. Okay. What do you want your legacy to be? Ooh, wow, <laughs> damn. That is, oh man, we, we might need to hit pause so I can think about it. <laughs> no, I, 
I think the, the, the first thing is, um, you know, definitely making my parents proud, which I feel like I've, you know, I've done that. My, my dad was very much a, a disciplinarian, right? And the things that you fuss with your parents about and you think they're, you know, they're holding you back and this. Yeah. I, discipline is one of those things that it's a life skill that if, if, if you have it, the things you can do are, are powerful, right? Mm-hmm. So while I rebelled somewhat against those things and you get older, you realize, oh my gosh, that all those, all those things that my dad, you know, was trying to, my mom and dad were trying to teach me. Oh, it makes so much sense now setting time, you know, setting up schedules and, and planning things and having discipline to go things. My dad is always a, you know, nurturing the mind, body, spirit. Right. So I think the first thing is just making my parent, make, make, making sure my, my parents are proud of the sacrifice that, that they made, you know, to, again, you know, you know, migrate from, you know, from, you know, their home to a foreign land, you know, they, there's a saying, right. They ask the Jamaican, where are you born? Man from foreign, not not from yard, or or something like that, or man man man, man from yard, not from foreign. It just means, hey, I was born, you know, in the country, in, in in the country, and then I went a foreign, which basically I went abroad, kind of thing, right? So making sure that my parents are proud, I think that's probably like the, the biggest like le- le- you know legacy that I can immediate one that I could think that I would leave, and then you know kind of leave the earth better than I found it you know, kind of treat people, um, you know, not be a terrible human, right? Right. Uh, so sort of treat people fairly and help others, you know, where and, and how I can. Um, I, you know, any sort of contributions that I, and it's hard to kind of look at, you know, sort of contributions of things that you've done and, and, you know, kind of keep score or have a running yeah. tabulation of those things and be like, and, and again, I'm, I'm not, I'm not necessarily the biggest self promoter. Uh, like I, it, you know, the, the whole social media world, like I get it, but I have a hard time sort of self promoting because yeah. I just, it's fine if somebody recognizes you for your, your accomplishments, but also sort of a little bit like different for me to kind of be a big self-promoter. But I, it's just one of those things that you, you, you kind of have to do something about it, right? You have to sort of establish a brand of some sort, right? So my legacy, my brand, I hope people, you know, always felt that I treated them fairly. Um, I helped them where I, you know, where I could, how I could, I helped them be better, I helped them be successful so for, for, my, for my customers and people I work with from a client perspective that, you know, I left them, you know, better than I found them kind of thing, right? And, you know, I'm not, I'm not at the point where like, I feel like I have, you know, more of my life, you know, behind me than in front of me, but I, you know, starting to think about some, some of those things, right. You know, what mark do I kind of want to leave beyond the things that I've done? Right. So I don't, you know, I'm not writing a memoir or, 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 or an autobiography, but you inevitably begin to sort of assess things right yeah. done where you are where you're going and i i feel like the you know my legacy isn't fully written yet so i'm and i'm in the process of of crafting it and creating it and and and, okay. and building it um but it's a it's a fantastic it's a great question that last sip <laughs> so that's a man it's supposed to be great question. I, I, again, I, supposed to hit you huh that last sip is supposed to hit you that's well, that last really sip you it's hits me, man. I, and I, I just want to, you know, leave people better than I, hopefully, hopefully nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes, right? right? Inevitably we are, nobody's perfect, but you know, kind of want to leave things better than you found them. Um, take care of the people that you, you know, you uh, care about. And I just, I just feel like just not be a terrible human, really yeah. just huh? not be a terrible, just don't be a asshole you know, fucked hard. Yeah. It's all good, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add I'm gonna add one thing to your legacy, right? Yeah. Put something on that damn wall behind you, bro. Like <laughs> I need people to know Aubrey does not live in a prison cell. Like I, I promise you, like, <laughs> but I don't know what it is with him in these Zoom and these podcast calls and this Blake wall. 
Like, I'm going to need you to do something, bro. Like, get a picture. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I... Something. I'm not a... I'm not a... Like, I got minimal decorating skills, right? Hey, dude, that's... There's, there's, there's these people called interior decorators, and you can just <sighs> cut a check and... And I don't know. I'd, I'd rather uh, I'd rather spend the money on an on an experience. <laughs> I'd rather spend the money. You know, I love I love I love to travel, right? And that's yeah. You know, for many of us, this is like this is this is tough, right? Yeah. Um, and and so I'd rather spend the money. You know, one one of my cousins, right, had been to you know fifteen countries before he was freaking fifteen, right? And I think that exposure sort of helps you understand the world and your pers- it gives you perspective, right? And right. I always find one of the things that kind of centers me, brings me back is traveling to other countries. And I've yeah. been fortunate, been blessed, you know, I've, um, you know, been to all kinds of spots around the world. And, and that perspective, I think, helps you, helps you understand the world in which you live, right? Yep. Your place in the world and helps you even understand the country that you live in, right? You, you it just expands your horizon, right? You see things a little differently and I really miss that. So rather than hiring an interior decorator to put something behind the wall, you know, I'd rather yeah. take, I'd rather take that money and, and, you know, go visit a country that I haven't been to someplace that I, that I want to see. Right. I, look, I get it. So, but at least go to Lowe's and get like a hammer and nail, just put a picture up. Oh, you know what? Mixed tiles, mixed tiles, dog. You can take pictures out of your phone. They'll ship them to you and you just, Put it on the wall, like a picture, please. So, okay. all right, next, next, next pod, podcast, I will, I will find something for the wall. It's just, it's just innocuous, right? It's just it's harmless, right? It's, you know, it's, it's just, it's just a wall. It, it... Yeah, when I put this out, look, all right, C three squad members, look, when y'all, when y'all, when y'all, when y'all listen to this, I would need you to go to the YouTube and just fast forward to this point and and, and watch this. We need Albany's help. So give your ideas of what he can do on the wall. Some, uh, clearly, something low-key cheap since he doesn't want to spend a whole lot of money on it. I'm saying, like, mix out, just put a picture up. We're we going to get we, we gonna get that wall fixed. 2021, what are we doing? We're getting that wall fixed. Okay. What you, what you can't tell, though, what you can't tell is that the wall actually has, like, texture to it. <laughs> you, you, can't really, you, can't, you can't really see that. But it's not just a regular wall. Like, the wall actually has, some, like, some texture. It's got depth. It's okay. just not showing up. Okay. Like, why don't you, you can put in a background or something? Put put the Jamaican flag <laughs> back back there. Or you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Put put the put the Jamaican flag out of one many people. That's that's the that's the motto of the island. So put the put that back. Superimpose yeah. that in, in post production, please. That that means I know I gotta hire somebody to do that. I don't oh, do that. I, don't know. Just like, <laughs> I gotta spend no, money. I know you got <laughs> skills like that. I know you got skills like that. Come on, man. Uh, you know, actually, it probably wouldn't be too hard because it's since it's all one. Well, it's not really one color, but uh, we'll see what I can do. We can see. Okay. All right. All right, man. All right, brother. I'm gonna let Great you get back to, to you. Uh, yeah, man. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. This is a pleasure. I hope we can do it again um, soon because I feel like we left a lot of things on the oh, table. Yeah. No, man. Uh, it's it's there's gonna be a series coming. We we don't talk about yeah. a whole lot. Of and uh, you know, whenever whenever you're ready to whenever you're ready to to um, you know race, um, you know we can we can make that happen too, man. Okay, yeah, no, it's all right. I'm 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 gonna come down with some things. It's okay. That's cool. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the model. Y. I'm gonna bring something else though too. Look, right. listen, this is this is an arms yeah. race. So if you if you step up to something, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that I I'm not far behind. <laughs> I mean, just, just, just know that if you do something, <laughs> this is this is chess, not checkers. <laughs> so just, just, just be aware. All right, we got cocktails, good conversation brought to you by the On the Corner Media Group. Check us out at onthecorner.us for more great content.